Um, so we will have uh, not only the T mu nu, which is controlled by the initial uh, equilibrium quantities like energy density and flow velocity, but also um, additional variables like bulk pressure, capital pi, and also shear stress tensor, which is the pi mu nu. For the conserved current, we also have diffusion current to describe how the particles can diffuse out of the fluid cells uh, compared, to, uh, compared to the regular particle number of currents. So together we want to solve these equations together with the equation of states. And also th these actually close the equation for the equilibrium variables like energy density and flow velocities. We need to have additional equations to solve to actually describe the evolution of the shear and bulk uh, uh, stress tensors. And this actually solve so by so-called second order Israel Stewart type of equations, which is a relaxation type of equations compared to the novel stock limit. So you can think about as a uh, back on envelope, basically the shear stress tensor will actually evolve uh, controlled by the gradients of the velocity field times the shear viscosities. And the value of this pi mu will actually evolve towards to this according to some relaxation type of equation. And the relaxation time is actually a second order transport coefficients inside these hydrodynamic equations. So, but uh, on, the, uh, on the intuitive levels, you can think about uh, all the viscous uh, pressures and uh, will actually evolve towards it to its navial stock limit uh, in terms of the, its dynamics. So what it does is basically the shear viscosity will actually resist, act as resistance to the deformation of the system. Essentially, if your system has a flow gradient in different directions, it will actually tear the systems to a different shape. And the shear viscosity will actually help you to resist uh, to, to the system to become like more eccentric or iso and isotropic. Uh, for bulk viscosity, you can think about is a basically a resistance to the global uh, radio expansions. So basically it will slow down the flow expansions uh, due, to, due to the gradients of velocities. And diffusion of the particles is actually controlled by the gradients of chemical potentials. And you can actually describe how the fluid, how basically a conserved charge going outside the fluid uh, in there with the diffusion currents. So here, let me illustrate a uh, basically a fact of shear viscosity through a simulations here, showing that we if we evolve to ident the identical energy densities with and without uh, shear viscosity in the hydrodynamic simulations, we would like to see how they differ from each other through the hydrodynamic simulations. As you can see that on the right hand side with the viscosities, the viscosity trying to smooth out the fine patterns in, uh, in, the, in the density distributions. So you can see at the later times, the density are more homogeneous compared to the simulations where the viscosity is zero. So you still see, still see some kind of very clear patterns in, in these density distributions in the no, no shear viscosity case. So what the shear viscosity will do, do to the median is it make the system more isotropic, trying to even out the gradients of velocity in different directions. And, and then, then you will see a more homogeneous distribution of the densities in the later stage when you have a large shear viscosities. So all these uh, differential equations as well as the transport coefficients are actually properly implemented in the state-of-art 3D hydrodynamic code. Here we will basically use uh, code one uh, code that you will use in the hands-on session, which is called music. Is actually a, a, a 3 3D hydrodynamic code which incorporates both shear and bulk viscosities as well as diffusions uh, inside the fluid and then help you to simulate the evolution of the quark gluon plasma that can produce in the that was produced in heavy ion collisions. <laughs>